Greetings everyone, welcome back. Um, we are going to continue to work with contour line this week and I believe next week also um, we're going to be adding to our study of contour line. Um, so the things that we know about contour would be that we're using one of our fundamental elements of art to create and it would be line. So how we're describing that information is going to be with line only. We're not employing shading or value at this time. The other thing that we know that we're working with with contour line and that we'll continue to work with this week is that we're looking at the touchable edges. So when we think about contour line, what we know is that we're describing the surface and all the things that we can feel uh, run our hands across. So the other thing that goes hand in hand with that that we know is that we're describing exterior details, but we're also describing interior features. So if you recall from last week, looking at the presentation that it is contour is not an outline because we're describing the nuance that is on the outside edges as well as that that is within. Um, an example would have been our hand. So we would look at not only the shape of it, but then going in and seeing the nail as well as the folds and wrinkles, etc. Um, the other thing that we know and we'll continue to work with is that we have to set the scale and maintain proportion. Um, so what we remember about that is when we begin our drawing, we begin hopefully, uh, and how I set out is with something that is very clear, uh, easy to see and identify in terms of part of that whole piece. Um, so any portion that I can describe really well, that sets the scale or the size for the rest of the drawing. Um, and then my, my job is to maintain that scale throughout so that the subject is proportionate. So when I'm observing it and it's taller than it is wide in my drawing, it's taller than it is wide and proportionately. Um, so we are always thinking about the parts to the whole. Um, in regards to proportion. And then another part that we know is uh, moving from the gesture drawing into contour line is a refinement process. So we're going to continue to refine. Um, so what would be new? Uh, what we're going to work through this week is we're going to add a subject. So we're going to work with more than one object. And there are a lot of things that stay the same even when we add another subject. We're still going to work with line. That's going to be our primary form of communication right now. Um, we're still going to be looking at the subject the same way in terms of really careful observations, making sure that we do record those touchable edges, looking at those exterior details, interior features. and. Our scale and proportion is something that we also pay attention to, but this is where we get a little bit of a change. So with a single object, we're comparing it with itself. With mul multiple objects, there is still that comparison within the subject itself, um, but then we go a step further and we have to compare object to object. So we do our gesture drawings to become familiar with our multiple objects. And I have my still life set up right here. Um, and we're again, working in our demonstration uh, in this lecture, how you would wanna work through your homework. So it's just a nice um, transition for you as you're working at home or really fluid, I, I hope. Um, so when we're setting the, the scale and uh, uh, what I meant to say was with our gesture drawings, we have our two subjects and we're going to be working with those so we understand um, generally the size of them compared to one another. And then as we go through that placement refinement process in the contour line drawing, then what we'll be looking at is not only the height and width of my uh, vessel here, but then the height of this subject, my giant clothespin, compared to the height of this and the width of this compared to that width. Um, and then what the spacing between them is compared to some kind of a, a measurement here in the subject. So um, we're going to be doing all of that comparing, looking at proportion and scale 
inside one object and then we're going to be doing that with all of the subjects that are there. So uh, regardless of it's one object, multiple objects, um, you're going to have to look at the proportion within your subject and then compare it to one another. So they look like they're in the same space. Um, and then the other thing that happens when we get more than one object um, is that we start thinking about the ground plane uh, or placement of these subjects within the picture plane. Um, and the picture plane is your drawing. So we want to think about where they're placed in that format because that communicates a lot to the observer, which subject is closer, which one's further. Um, and then next week we're going to be talking about composition and that's where it becomes even more interesting about the ground placement. Um, some tools that we're going to be working with this week, um, physical tools, we're going to be working with our charcoal pencil um, and graphite pencils. Um, and a side note to that is I still have not received any communication about our other art supplies. So uh, keep working, um, use what it is that you have. If you bought the kit from Art Supply Warehouse, wonderful. Use your charcoal pencils and they, it came with an HB or 2B pencil in there so you can use that. Um, and we'll just continue to use the newsprint. If you have a heavyweight paper, um, perhaps some of you got tired of waiting uh, or maybe you already have that supply, um, then we can make use of that. Um, so those are physical tools, is that the charcoal pencil is what we're going to work, work with. Um, the other thing, uh, a process, um, is going to be citing. So using our pencils as a um, measuring device, as a way to take angles and understand more about our subject. Okay, so that's what we're going to work on. Um, your homework assignment, you were to choose two objects uh, from home, any two objects, uh, and like I already showed you, I have mine set up here next to me. I put them on a piece of paper just to make it really clear. You know, in class we would have a stage set up um, that would be a very clean space for those subjects to rest. It makes it really clear what it is that you're observing. So you may choose to do that and you may not. Uh, it is a suggestion. Uh, and just that a suggestion, um, but we're going to be in charge of choosing two subjects and we're going to be creating a drawing from those. So the details would be that we need to arrange those items. So when we were talking about a contour line drawing last week, we talked about an inherently interesting subject for contour line. Um, cell phones, not great because there's not a lot of touchable information. They're very sleek, slick, um, and purposefully so. Uh, but it doesn't give the viewer a lot of interest. So when we think about our subjects, we're continue, continuing with contour lines. We want to keep that in our, the forefront of our mind. But we also now need to think about how these subjects are going to be arranged together. And this arrangement of inanimate objects is called a still life. Uh, and it's something that has been done century for centuries uh, for observational purposes, for recording, studying, um, for drawings and paintings. So um, when I talk about a still life, this is what I'm talking about is your arrangement of inanimate objects. So we're choosing two and we're going to arrange them together. Now our first task is to use a sheet of newsprint and to do three gesture drawings. Now with those gesture drawings, with each one, we're going to make a new arrangement of our subject matter, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Our gesture drawings are becoming a lot more, um, hopefully, second nature. So I'm just gonna give these a quick shift for me, for my perspective. And um, we're using a single sheet of newsprint for each, uh, for those three gesture drawings or sketches. Um, so we'll want to make sure that we leave some room for all of those. coming in and grabbing all that information that I'm going to eventually want to show and I'm getting familiar with my object 
and I'm okay with those multiple lines. Again, I just want to start understanding. And now it's not only one subject, but I have also uh, my second subject. So this is where we can start to look at how those objects are relating to one another. And remember about our basic shapes from last week? And make good use of those if you found that to be helpful. If you didn't find it to be particularly helpful, um, you could give it another try, maybe with um, Maybe with the uh, hands that we were working with last week, you, it wasn't your favorite or maybe it didn't work well for you in that regard. Okay, so that's my first arrangement. Uh, I'm going to do two more, so I need to move this stuff around. And I could just, you know, do the old um, uh, hat trick and just move them. Um, but I could also change how the objects are um, placed. So maybe I'll have that one laying down for this uh, arrangement. So, and then with each one, right, I'm still drawing the same subject matter, but it's a different view or vantage point. So that's going to help me as I continue on to my refined drawing, uh, because I'm continuing to study the same set, but I get multiple views, which provides a greater understanding. So there's that. And then uh, I talked about the idea of drawing through something uh, last week. Um, just as it's a very natural way of seeing uh, an or seeing uh, recording an object. So in, if I start here and come out, um, it's a bit forced uh, and I may not have a, a solid angle. So And what we're going to talk about today is all this stuff that I do with my pencil <laughs> that maybe looks like magic. I don't know what it <laughs> looks like to somebody who's not doing it um, or used to doing it. It probably looks a bit goofy, um, but we're going to talk about that. That's our sighting tool that we'll use. There's that metal detail that disappears back here. I just start to see that spring and then straight across from it is that little pin. So, okay, that's fine. Uh, and then maybe for my third one, I can have an arrangement where they are connected. So let me try, let me try that one out and see how that looks to me. So it's nice because my ellipse, so my uh, vantage point, my perspective on the subject is remaining consistent, right? I'm turning it, unless I turn the vase over, but uh, this ellipse is me, um, staying the same. So it's good that I have continued practice with that, but it'd be good if I also changed it. It would be fine. And then that um, loose, loose rule about not spending more than five minutes on your gesture drawing. Uh, if you find yourself obsessing over your gestures, uh, then keep that rule because we definitely want to put a lot of that um, emphasis and energy into your finished drawing rather than on these guys. Obviously, you want good information, but we want to get, get to it. So that's going to come out. Barely gonna fit. Okay. And then it's gonna same here, same right about there. Here's the here's the edge. Change in direction. And then same angle on the other side. This one's coming down. Oh, that works so nicely. <laughs> Sometimes I, I just get so, I think, oh, these tools are great and I use them. And then in the middle of using it, I think, oh my gosh, it's so wonderful that it really does work. What a goofball, I know. And that's coming over. And that falls 
almost the same angle. Yeah, so those are my choices. So I have my uh, three gesture drawings. I'm working on a, a nice scale so that I can see clearly in these thumbnails and I can explore uh, those different options. So what we know about our gestures is that they're for planning, right? It's a planning tool. Um, so we learn more about our subject matter, get familiar with it, and um, also get a chance to compose our drawing, right? We're going to be continuing to add information and we would like to, from the beginning, have a, a solid start. Um, so that's what these the planning tool is here. Um, from my three gestures, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one that I like the best, you know, like, oh, that one's the most interesting. Also, um, what I may say is that if you don't find any of them particularly interesting, it would be absolutely fine to wonderful, great um, for you to change it up completely for um, your big drawing, okay? So I think that I'm happy with all of these. I really like them. Um, and three is a pretty good opportunity to explore. I put little pieces of tape on the side of my uh, paper because I don't want it to, to flop down. Um, so that's just a, a thing I have. So I've got my gestures. And I have a piece of the heavyweight paper um, here underneath ready to use. Again, if you guys don't have your heavyweight paper, please don't worry about it. Go ahead and use your newsprint. Um, some of you are having a hard time also acquiring the newsprint paper. Um, and for those of you that asked, as well as those of you that just turned in uh, assignments that were on some kind of surface, that's wonderful. Um, let's just keep turning in work and we'll have the opportunity to um, maybe a little bit later in the term um, we can talk about some extra credit work uh, to fill in for, for that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and use this as my plan and I think it would be nice to have that next to me so I can see it. And I'm going to go ahead and leave. I like that arrangement the best, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, what I would like to address, and that we'll talk about a lot next week because we're talking about composition next week, is uh, the idea of the orientation of your picture plane, or also known as your format, also known as your paper. Um, I had, I think just one student ask me about whether or not the paper could be vertical or horizontal. It can be either way, right? It doesn't, doesn't matter to me. Um, it does matter to the drawing <laughs> and what kind of information that you're placing on there. So we just want to think about what it is that we're drawing and if that makes the most sense. Uh, for us to have it ver vertically oriented or horizontally. My information is vertical, right? The arrangement is vertical. So I'm going to continue with my format to be vertical. So let's uh, start again with our gesture. Whoops, and I think that's a bit high. Look at for how much content I have. So it may make most sense for me to leave some room and maybe start here at the base. I'm using my graphite pencil to start with. The charcoal pencil, as you'll come to find out, is really a wonderful tool. It's super heavy, very rich, uh, has a good feel on the paper, um, but also is re a really heavy mark, so it's going to leave um, a great a deposit down on the page that's harder to get rid of. So uh, we we're talking about contour line and setting up our drawing. So the gesture as the base is nothing new. Um, but I'm just trying to see, you know, how big do I want this thing? And then starting to work on the accuracy of the form. Rounded forms are uh, going to be rounded along the bottom. So if you're looking at a pot, unless 
the maker of the vessel changes that shape to be square, you're looking at something round. So there should be a slight round here at the base. And I like to use that repetition of the ellipse as I go up. It helps to build a volume for me. And I find that to fit in line with that basic shape construction. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I've got the neck right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself. And what I may like to do is the pencil, any of your pencils can be tools for looking at your subject matter. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to place my pencil right alongside the edge of the neck and just down onto my surface and I just want to see where it looks like the neck comes in further than the footprint of this vessel so it's it's smaller. So I want to use information that I have available to me in my construction so we're getting more construction tools. And then what I'm going to do is I'm not on top of, um, I'm not going to start that neck up here uh, because I'm looking, I can see the opening means I'm looking down on it. That means I'm seeing some of the top. So I need for this, the neck to start down a little further. I'll come in here. And then I'll start to open up for the top of the vessel. And something that I can do to help me and what you would see in your presentation is I can bring my pencil across my subject and I can see where it touches here. There's a gap and where it touches down here. And I can take that angle over to my drawing and see that that relationship is good, right? Right here to right here is the same angle, so I did a good job at um, looking at how far out I needed to extend, and I could do the same on the other side. And that's super helpful when we're working with man-made objects because it's harder to get that accuracy side to side, left to right, or uh, top to bottom. But I think that's looking pretty darn good. And then I'll notice that it's, uh, there's a slight angle coming back in. So as I come around, I'm going to attach back into here and here. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's reading nicely. It looks like maybe this could be a little more open. Um, so let's get, uh, let's get some more measuring in. So it may be, you know, how I'm coming in, I'm looking at angles, so I'm touching uh, my pencil across two points, and that helps me understand where this is in relationship to that edge. Um, the other thing when we talk about proportion is now I have the opportunity, I've got this subject laid out, but perhaps it needs some uh, adjustment. So I'm going to look at its width to its height. So as I uh, line up, I'm going to have my arm fully extended and I'm going to line up to one side of the subject and draw my the edge of the uh, pencil and draw my thumb across to the other side. And then, um, so for you guys, let's see, do I have it in there? Right about there. And I'm going to take this measurement hold it, right? Don't move my thumb. And then I'm going to compare it to the height. So it looks like that width comes just to the neck. So in my drawing, I can take my pencil, look at how it's like a perfect pencil's width. And then I can turn this on right side up. And that should be the moment where that neck starts right there. So now I have a more concrete air, um, uh, timing for where that neck is supposed to start. And I want to make sure that my ellipses 
match and stay the same as I go down so that nothing gets to be too wonky. Now something I can look at is the opening here. Um, I can look at the back side and the front side of that rim, right? Back and front. And what my mind does is it looks at the distance. My eye looks at the height here and how much lower it is here. So what I can do is I can measure, right? The same thing that we did before. And let me look. We can line up. Arm is extended. Line up, line up, line up. Bring the thumb down till it looks like it's right at the edge of the back of that opening. And that's my measurement. So what could I compare this measurement to right here? Oh, that neck. Holy smokes. So this space here needs to be the same as this space here. So that's something that I might want to look at, right? So I could go both ways. I could look at the opening and say, well, then this is a little short. Or I could look at this and say that this is a little bit too wide. I think that I would, hmm. Yeah, I think that I would probably make, keep this and rise up a little bit to give myself more room here. Yeah, I think that's what I would do. So now that we're feeling pretty good uh, on this front, um, another tool that is handy is to go ahead and place in a vertical line or a plumb line and uh, divide that, that surface. So let me grab my ruler. So I could go ahead and I don't even have to, I could not even draw it. I could just place this here and then I can observe what it looks like. I'm pretty equitable in terms of how wide here and how wide here. And it looks like I'm coming out a little bit higher and down a little bit quicker on this side. So that's a really good moment of comparison. And you can use your ruler to do this. So as I look side to side, then I start to see what this little arch looks like and what it looks like on the other side. Then I move down a little bit. And that's where I really start to see that this is coming at a different rate than the other side coming down. So those, and you don't even, you can use your ruler. You could also use another pencil. Just, it's a, a way to give yourself a division um, so that you can compare side to side with a little bit more objectivity. Okay, let's move on to this uh, little, this little big clothespin. Um, so we've already got the size set up here um, and feel, I feel pretty strongly about the, its shape. Um, so I think this would be a good opportunity. This isn't fully refined, um, but I want to go through that same building process with my second subject before I come in and get all nitty gritty because what if I start adding pieces here and I see the need for an adjustment because the spacing isn't quite right. So that's what I would prefer to do. And since we're drawing transparently, that gives me the opportunity to come in and draw and <clears throat> excuse me, place those light lines um, and then give uh, the purposeful or intentional lines um, that good, strong, detailed information in the charcoal pencil. So it doesn't get too confusing as the finished drawing. So something we want to begin to do also is to look at landmarks. So something that I started with was looking at how far in the neck was compared to the bottom of this vessel. I would like to find out where this closed pin is intersecting the mouth of this vessel, right? It's coming in and I can see it's meeting somewhere along this edge. So where is that? really need a starting point. So it probably makes a lot of sense for me um, to use something again that I can see really clearly, which is this subject here, and then I can build inward. 
So I'm going to start with that. I already have content to work off of. Um, so maybe I want to discover what the angle is here at the bottom of that closed pin. So again, a fully extended arm. Well, I guess, you know, for angles, I don't know that you need to fully extend your arm. I'll talk about that extension and why it's so important and I keep saying it in a moment. Um, and when I go and take an angle, so if I hold my pencil up along um, to get this angle right here, right? Um, I can bring that over to my page and I can make a, a small mark. I don't need to draw the whole line. I just need a guide, right? Enough so I can see the direction of that line. Um, and that's really all that's required to continue working. And you'll find what you're comfortable with that as well. So I'm going to do. I'm going to look at my angle, right? So I've got a um, a wonderfully linear object, and I want to make sure that I capture that content really well. So there's that, and then I'm going to continue up on the other side. So I've got a little notch that's cut out, and I might as well draw a circle. That's going to give me that notch. Um, and it's, it's not a perfect circle, but that's going to be a good start for me. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to turn the corner to get to this angle here. So now is probably a good time for me to start doing some comparisons, which is what I was talking about that we would need to do between our two subjects. Um, so I'm starting to need to know what the width of this is. So I'll want to uh, take a measurement. And I mentioned that I was going to explain to you what that looked like. So once I take a measurement, I have my arm fully extended because in order to have an accurate comparison, um, I need to have that same distance from my subject. So if I have my arm kind of at this angle and I take uh, take a measurement, that's one thing. And then I go back to, to compare it or take another one and then I'm out here or I'm closer, then there's not a true comparison because you have too many variables in that measurement. So if we have our arm fully extended every time, then we're going to have that same unit of measure. Um, and that would be an accurate comparison. So I'm going to look here. And what I looked at is from side to side. And I'm going to find something in this subject I've already described to uh, find an, a similarity. And I've got it, which is red. So from neck to opening, that space should be how wide my close pin is here to here. So it looks like I was a little bit wide. So it's good that I checked. Again, I'm looking at the uh, angle. When I do this, I'm checking that angle so that I can bring that over to my drawing. If I have a question, and it's nice, it's a good practice um, as you're training your eye to see um, if you're getting better, and I would imagine that you're all the time going to be getting better. Okay. Now I've got this big spring in the middle, um, so to find that location, I could probably take a measurement here to here, again, find someplace else to compare that to. I could also use an angle. So the same thing that I did on this side where I was trying to see where the um, top of the vase and then the side of it, um, and I looked at that, I can find this location because I know some other things. So if I line up my pencil with this corner, and then come through here, that'll give me the spot for my spring. So I'm going to bring that across, and it should be right in here.
And we'll look at the size of that, but that's the general location. And we could find out some more information. So we start kind of filling in the, the blanks over on this side or the gaps. Um, is there's another notch cut out for the metal to run through. So um, I can look at where I have my, my cutouts over here, right? I've got particular information that would give me uh, a landmark to uh, anchor one side and then I can move the uh, pencil around. Like the hands of a clock is a really nice analogy. Like as I'm looking at things, I'm thinking, oh, is that at one o'clock or is that at three o'clock or is it 3.30? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I can use the hands of the clock as an idea about this turning. Um, a protractor is also a really nice example, um, if that makes sense to you, looking for angles in things. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and look from the top of the notch here to the top of the notch over here. Some might say it's top notch. Here to right here. So I just have that little mark and then what's going to happen is that cutout comes into the subject. And we'll just keep that angle going the same way as this edge. We could also go further in here and come into that little wire piece. Um, I think at this point it would be good for me to get in the rest of my um, subject before I uh, get focused on the smaller components. Yes, they need to be there, uh, but I have a lot more content to include um, before I uh, focus there. Now a measurement could be good to look at with that spring. Okay, that could work. I just don't have that information in there yet. So now what I was observing is that this width is the same as here to that back edge. So this And the really nice part about man-made things most times is if you figure out information on one side, you've got it on the other. So um, the angle on this side is right here is the same as this side. And um, my uh, angle of recession uh, is the same top to bottom. And then the width here to here is the same as this piece. So it's nice when you start working with subject matter and understanding um, how they fit together. That puzzle comes together a lot faster. Angle is a little different here to here, but that width is staying, remaining the same. And when we're looking at our subject matter, um, it is important that we look instead of create. So as I look, um, my observation is that I have wider here than I do here. But in my mind, I think, well, no, I've seen this thing and it's wide on the other side too. So we've got to be sure that we go with our observation and 
um, critically look through the subject. So everything's looking good so far. Um, and what I would like to do is come across here to here is where I'm going to have that, that little notch come in on the other side. Follow my angle, follow the angle on this side. That spring is making a little turn and then lining up with that spring, I can see the angle headed this way. There's a thickness to it. We have a big change in angle back here. See how that is really sharp. So when I'm looking at a subject and I'm thinking about a, a face of a clock, um, then I want to think that that clock is facing me and the hand is just moving around or that I'm looking at a gauge and that um, lever is just moving side to side. Um, so you're not pointing the pencil um, back to get that angle because you can't translate that to the page. So you're just moving that pencil uh, like it's a hand on a clock or a hand on a gauge and trying to get that lined up and bring that over here. So we have that content. And we've got that piece of metal nestled right in there. And there is an ex, uh, let's see, a change in angle back here. And we don't really see a direction for it. Okay, that's good. So this is reaching up and then we've got some good information is that this is my stopping point on that side and then I have a space between that I've measured and then I've got my starting point over here. So I can look at, you know, an angle to depart from that point of knowledge and then start to curve that up. And I could do the same thing on the other side. And then I've got my um, leading piece here that's headed up. And if I've got this corner right here, then I can go ahead and take an angle to figure out where I need to stop this spring. So connecting, making a connection using the edge of my pencil from right here to right here. And you guys will have seen uh, these examples in your presentation. So there'll be some um, in a little, on a hard copy, that's not a hard copy, but outside of this video, there'll be some examples for you. So this is uh, the top of that spring. That's where the wood starts again. Um, so let's go ahead and keep building up. So the ang there's an angle change right here. And it's gonna keep going and those intersect with one another. So there's a little bit of a cap right here, but that intersection, that lets you know how tall it should be. So that's kind of helpful. Um, and we can double check that. And then from here, we should be able to draw our ellipse and, and find some success in that. Um, we'll look at wrapping that. That spring around. And it has its thickness, so we we'll want to make sure to communicate that, and that can be part of our refinement process. There we go. And we're going to have more throughout. So if you imagine this angle, that spring is probably continuing on at that same angle, and you could come back through it and see that. 
Um, so that's reading really well. What else? Oh, we need to finish up the top of it. That'd be helpful. <laughs> Same angle inside as outside, so we'll keep this going all the way. And, and that one there at the top. So there's that. And when I get the um, the other side, oh yeah, so it is helpful for us to have that spring, um, the angle for that spring, so I can see it. So, headed back that way. And then I have a lot of information to start with, so looking for this, um, the corner of this part of the wood. Should come in right there, right at that point. So there's that, and then let's find that angle. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So, um, a combination of a thumbnail or thumbnail gesture to get the start of it and then coming through and working with those measurements um, to really get information in the right place and I realize there's another there's a detail so there is an ellipse in here. Another one. Okay. That one's narrower and wider. So let's take what's already in existence and let's go through and dis um, finish our de descriptions. Um, with your charcoal pencil, when you put down information, it tends to move a lot. We're going to leave this underdrawing that. Um, construction, all of those construction lines, I would like to see those for now. Um, in our drawings, that won't always be the case. I don't always want you to have those there, but for right now, go ahead and leave those construction lines. And this is when we're going to go in and make more sense of that surface um, and be more descriptive. So I'm I, uh, look, looking at the materiality of the charcoal will help you in deciding where to start placing that information. If I start down here, being right-handed, I'm probably going to drag it across the paper and smear it. So, uh, I feeling confident with my proportion, I'm going to go ahead and making those adjustments throughout, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start up here and... And you can already see uh, hopefully that line work coming through is so strong and that's the the really nice part about the charcoal pencil is that strength of mark here and okay so now I have those first two pieces of those components in um, now I've got these really long lengths of lines, so I do have my ruler, and I don't mind that you guys use it. Um, I know a lot of folks say that freehand drawing does not utilize a ruler. Um, I believe that you can be practiced in making those lines, and the more you do it without an assistance, the more natural it will become. Um, but you still need to figure out the angle of that line and where it's being placed um, within your format. So I don't think that it's necessarily, some people say, oh, it's cheating. Well, no, you still have a lot of observational information to work out. Um, so if you would like to, I mean, it's in your packet for a reason, and that reason really is perspective. Um, but you're welcome to use that. Um, if you would like to give yourself, uh, build some confidence. 
as we proceed. So it's a, it's kind of a nice a nicety. Necessary? Mm. Maybe in perspective. Let's be bold and try this next one without it, okay? Oh, not bad, not bad. Got a little shaky there at the end of that one. So I know that when I work through and I'm doing my construction work that it is a big old mess and when I come through to refine that what happens is I, I make shorter in many instances um, just shorter stretches so as I go through to draw that circle I feel pretty comfortable till I get about here and then I need to change direction and maybe I need to come in and fortify this side a little bit um, when we subtract information that would be a good time to also think about utilizing um, your erasers and you might think why aren't we doing that just yet well I do like to see how you're constructing your subjects and I think that's important to know that the drawing doesn't have to be nor will it be perfect, we can get a pretty good semblance uh, of that. feeling happy with that spring in case any of you couldn't tell. <laughs> okay, let's come on down with this angle. And so here you can see the charcoal as I start to pull and you'll see the drag marks coming away. Really wonderful malleable tool. So if I don't want to get that charcoal dragging throughout my drawing, um, I could have worked top to bottom left to right and that would have helped. <laughs> I could also put place this hand and arm across my surface and then as I pull I'm coming across this instead of the page. <coughs> Excuse me, I could also place my hand down and as I get to a certain point, pick it up and move it again. Oh, I'm feeling really uh, very pleased with this progress and Hopefully you guys are able to see that um, construction really coming through in a solid fashion. Let's come in and place that there. Yeah, I really did give myself a hard time with the spring here in the center. And that could have been alleviated had I done more preparation. So with these drawings, that structural work, that underpinning, um, for which you're putting your details on top of. You want to put as much information in as is useful for you and that could have been really useful for me. Um, so that is just a side note.
Remember these are contour line drawings so none of this shadow work is going to be placed in there. We're not worried about what our light is doing right now. Okay, so that just uh, that about does it for our for our drawing for the lecture and demo for today. Um, a quick recap is that we're doing our um, thumbnails right. We've got technically three of them, and uh, we're going to be changing the arrangement of our still life. Um, three times so that we've got a different setup to work with. From those three, choose one that you like the best. So I really enjoyed having the two subjects nested, um, resting one on top of the other. And when I go over to my finished drawing, to create my finished drawing, what I'd like to do is think about the orientation of the paper. We'll start to think about that. Uh, I have such a long setup that the long length of the paper vertically made the most sense. If I would have chosen this one here, right, that would make the most sense for me in a horizontal orientation because that way I could um, I could really utilize the entirety of the format um, and draw on a larger scale so this is my plan or my my guideline here and then I've got my And then I've got my heavyweight paper. If you guys have it, if you don't have this yet, then another sheet of newsprint is just fine. Um, but we'll use our graphite pencil um, for the layout, right? And as we're figuring out the proportions and the structures, um, and then we'll use our charcoal pencil right here uh, for that refinement and for those finished lines. Um, and we're going to be utilizing our um, pencils as measuring devices um, for taking angles. So if we want to look at um, how far out this part of the vase um, protrudes, then I can line up my pencil here along that lip, connect it to that part of the vase, and that angle can be then translated over here to the drawing and just transfer that. Uh, we're also taking measurements so that um, let me go back to the angle thing. Think of your clock face. So here I could think about where that is on a clock. That's probably almost one o'clock. Uh, you don't even have to think about what time it is. You can even think of a gauge or a protractor. And just remember to keep it flat to your person instead of pointing um, back or forward. Just moving side to side. Line up with that angle and then place it down in the drawing. Uh, we're also taking measurements now, so our measurements are lining up the edge of your uh, measuring device, your pencil, drawing your thumb across to the opposite edge. And then we're using that measurement not to directly place it down on the paper, but to make a comparison. So if I wanted to find out, again, how wide I am here to how tall, take a measurement on one uh, across the width or the height. 
and keep that measurement and then turn it so that you're looking at the opposite direction. And that'll let you know pretty well where, where you should be at. Um, so I think those are all of our keys for today. Uh, just remember that your ABCs, uh, which are always B comparing in your drawings, and uh, as, it, as you go throughout that construction process, and not only within the one subject, but one object compared to the other, okay? Uh, if you have any questions, then the discussion forum is available, as well as emails to myself. Um, you guys are doing a great job, and I cannot wait to see what you make this week. Have a wonderful week, and happy drawing.